Welcome back. We are on to week three of our crochet along. And this week we have another floral panel for you. So I really enjoyed creating this one in rows. And if it reminds you or anybody else of the Mary Mary, quite contrary, you're just gonna have that stuck in your head now. So apologies. These are our rows of tulips. We're using uh, not all of our colors this week, but a good selection. We're having a nice base in our cream, adding our grass green for the stems. We call them stems, little stems and leaves. And then nice pops of color for the tulips. So we're gonna work through all the stitches together. Half treble crochets are here again, our winning stitch of the blanket. And we're also bringing in some treble stitches and a few chains and working into chain spaces as well. So all of these techniques we'll talk through together in the video coming up next. And yeah, by the end of this week, we'll have another two lovely panels to add to our blanket. And again, you can already see we're up to a really nice size at week three, but also just another really nicely repetitive stitch for us to work through. For panel eight, which is our tulip rows, we're going to start with two really nice easy rows of half treble. And I've gone ahead and made the foundation chain. You will be using a chain of 97 for panel eight. Again, mine's a little shorter for the purposes of the video, but I'm still gonna work through a full stitch repeat with you. So I've just got one last half treble to make on row two. And this is actually being made into the top of the starting chain too. So that's the only slight difference with this panel and for panel nine is that some of our starting chains here do count as stitches, but they are all specified in the pattern for you. So if in doubt, just double check that pattern. And it's mostly because we're switching here between a couple of stitches. We're using half trebles for our first couple of rows in cream. And then when we switch to our, our green grass color and also the colorful colors <laughs> for our tulips, we're gonna be using trebles. And just so the way that those stitches interplay and intersect is slightly different. But for the purposes of where we are, just know that on the last half treble of row two, we are going to want to change color so that we have our grass color ready on our hook. So find the end of your yarn. Sometimes easier said than done. But just proof that we all get in a tangle every now and again. Okay, once you have your yarn end in grass, we're going to yarn over to complete that half treble stitch. We can at this stage cut our cream yarn, leaving a tail end to weave in because we won't need that color for a couple of rows. So with our green color attached, our grass green, we want to turn. And then we're going to start row three with a chain three in grass. And that does count as our first treble. So what that means is, and I'll talk you through it when we get there, but when we're working back down for our next row, we are gonna wanna work into the top of that chain three and we're gonna treat it like a stitch. So we've chained three in green yarn, grass green, which counts as a treble we are then gonna skip one stitch. And in the next stitch, you'll see from your pattern that we've got a couple of stitches here in brackets. It says treble, chain one, and treble. And those are all in brackets. And that means we want to work all of those into the next stitch. So our chain three counts as our first. We're gonna skip the next one. We're then gonna work a treble a chain one and a treble all into that same stitch. So again, just note that we've switched from half trebles in cream to trebles in grass. 
We then want to skip two stitches, then work a treble, a chain one, and a treble in the next stitch. So skip two, a treble, a chain one, and a treble in the next stitch. And if you take a little look at your pattern, you'll see that that is our stitch pattern until pretty much the end of the row. Skip the next two stitches, treble, chain one, and a treble in the next stitch. We're gonna carry on in that way until two stitches remain. So as I said, you'll be working with a stitch count of 95, so your panel is going to be much longer than mine. But regardless of whether you're working with that on panel eight or with a stitch count of 119 on panel nine, we're all gonna work in the same way. We're gonna work in that little stitch pattern until we get to the last two stitches. So go ahead, skip two stitches, treble, chain one, and a treble in the same stitch. And repeat in that way until you have two stitches remaining. And I'll meet you at the end of the row and just to show you how we're gonna finish off the end of this row. So once you've worked in that stitch pattern repeat until the end of the row, we're just gonna treat how we finish row three a little bit differently. So we've worked until we've got two stitches remaining. We're then going to skip one stitch and we're gonna work a treble in the last stitch. But as we do so, we are going to change to yarn H, which is actually our oyster pink. So we're working a treble, we're then gonna bring in our oyster pink yarn because this is going to form the first colorful row of our tulips. And so I have left the last yarn over of my treble until I bring in oyster pink. And then gonna yarn over with the pink and pull through to complete the stitch. At this stage, we can then cut our grass yarn. We won't need that until we make our next stems, if you will. And we now have our oyster pink ready on our hook to make our first row of tulips. We turn our work ready for the start of row four. So using oyster pink, we're going to chain three and this does count as a stitch. We're then going to chain one and skip one treble. So this is counted as a stitch here in the top of our grass treble. We're gonna skip this next treble. Then we're going to make a tulip stitch into the chain one space below. So that essentially means we're not gonna work into the tops of our stitches. We're gonna go straight into this chain space here and we're going to make a tulip. Now our tulip stitch is formed out of five trebles. And we're gonna do one little special trick which is gonna give our tulip its really nice shape. And it's worth saying as well for this panel, that it's not reversible. This row that we're working on now is our right side row. So our tulips are gonna form on the front of our work, which is the opposite to how our bobbles were working out for us earlier on. This is gonna be the front of the tulips. So we're going to work five trebles into that chain space. And we don't want them to be joined together at the top. So actually, we're almost working five individual trebles. It's not a cluster or a bobble. 
we're completing them all to the end. So I've just done three. I'm going to work a fourth. Just get myself a bit more yarn. And a fifth. So at this stage, you can see it doesn't look so much like a tulip as it does a fan or a curve. And we're just going to do one little neat trick that's going to cinch in that set of five stitches and make it much more tulip shaped. So I want you to take your hook out of the loop. And if you're worried about dropping it or it getting too short, you can pull it up a little bit taller here. We're now going to insert our hook back in to the top of the first of those five trebles that we made. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we're just going to pop it from front to back through the top of that treble. We're then going to hook our loop back. We're going to insert our hook back through our loop. And then we are going to slip stitch. So we're just going to pull this original loop back through as if we were slip stitching. And so you can see that's really cinched in our tulip. It's essentially gathered it together at the back. I mean, I keep calling it a tulip. You, you could argue it's, <laughs> it's not very tulip shaped, but it's what we've gone for. We're calling it a tulip. So we've cinched together all of those five stitches and we're now ready to move on to our next one. So that's what we're calling our tulip stitch. We've made it into the chain one space below. We now want to chain three and we're going to skip two trebles. So that essentially means we're going to skip this treble here and we're going to skip this treble here and we're going to make our next tulip stitch into that space. So you'll see now our pattern says repeat from star and our star starts before tulip stitch in the chain one space below, then chain three. So I'll just work you through that one more time. To make our tulip stitch, we're going to make five trebles into that chain space. Once you've made your five, you can take your hook out Insert your hook back in through the top of the first of those five trebles. Pick up the loop again on your hook and then slip stitch it by pulling that loop through the top of that first treble. Then chain three. And that is our stitch pattern repeat for the rest of the row. The chain three essentially helps us to get across to the next chain space. So carry on in this way, working your tulip stitches and then a chain three into each of the stems, each of the chain one spaces from the row below. And I will meet you at the end of the row, depending on whether you're working panel eight or panel nine. That may be, well, it will definitely be longer than my little swatch. But carry on in this way until the end of the row until you've worked into your last chain one space. And I'll meet you at the end of the row and just show you how we are going to finish off these tulip rows. Here's how my tulips are looking as I'm nearly at the end of row four. I've just worked into the last chain one space. So just as a refresher, if we take a look at our pattern, we wanted to work our tulips and our chain threes until we got to our last chain one space. We then need to make one tulip into the chain one space below which I've just done. But rather than chaining three here, we now want to chain two. We're gonna skip one treble, which is this one here. And then we want to make one treble into the final stitch of the row. Uh, if you recall when we started this row in grass previously, we said that this chain three was going to count as a stitch. 
So as we make our final treble into the last stitch, that means we want to work into the top of this chain three because it is being treated as a stitch. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through two. But before yarning over and completing that treble in oyster pink, we want to change back to our cream yarn because rows five and six are worked in cream. So bring your cream yarn back in. We can cut our oyster pink yarn, leaving a long enough tail end to weave in. We won't need that one now for the rest of our panel because we're gonna move on to primrose and also golden. All of our other tulips are made in exactly the same way, but we're not gonna be using that color again. We're alternating between three colors. So on the final treble of that row, going to yarn over in cream to complete the stitch. We now have cream ready on our hook again, so we can turn. And for row five, we are pretty much working half trebles all the way along. But obviously we've got a slightly unusual stitch combination here in that we have our tulips, which are sitting on the front of our work, so they're not really available to work into. And we have our chain threes that we worked in between. So we're going to start row five with a chain two in cream. And this does count as a stitch, it counts as a half treble. We then want to make two half treble in the chain two space. So we're not gonna work into the actual chains, we're just gonna go into that space in between. So that's one half treble, and two half trebles. Our pattern then says, three half treble in the chain three space, skip one tulip and repeat from star. So we're essentially, we're gonna work three half treble here, skip the tulip, three half treble here, skip the tulip and so on. Until we get to the last chain two space at the start of the row. So, Continue in this way, following your pattern, noting that we've switched back to half trebles in cream here, rather than the trebles we used on the previous two rows. And we want to make three half trebles into each chain three space, skipping the tulips. I'll meet you back at the end of this row, and I'll show you how to finish off and how mine is looking. Once you're near the end of the row, you'll have worked three half trebles into each, each chain three space. You should then have a chain two space and one treble left. So our pattern says we need to work two half trebles into that chain two space. And then because we're treating that chain three as a treble, we're gonna make our final half treble into the top of the oyster pink chain three that we made on the previous row. We can then turn our work ready to start row six. And you'll see now that row six is actually a repeat of row two. And indeed, as we move up the pattern, row seven is then a repeat of row three. And row eight is a repeat of row four. The main difference that you'll note is that, as we said, we're not using the oyster pink again. We're gonna to switch to primrose. So that is pretty much all the stitches you're gonna need for this panel and for panel nine to make your tulips. Just remember we're switching between half trebles at, for the cream rows and then trebles for our stems and our tulips. But otherwise, you can carry on in that way, working in the pattern and using the stitch counts that you've been given, and working in that little pattern repeat. The only main differences are on the ends of the rows as I've shown you. So I'll meet you back here 
at the end of this panel. Here's a little look at what my smaller swatch is looking like now that we've reached the end. We fastened off at the end with a slip stitch in just the same way that we did with our other panels. And I've also magically also sewn in all of my ends. So unfortunately, you may still have that section to do, but here's how it'll look when it's complete. Your little tulips should be sort of fluffing out on the front of your work. If they've got a little bit squashed as you've worked, then we can fluff them up here. But this is our right side and then this is our wrong side. So you, it should be quite a clear difference. We've now talked through all the stitches and techniques we'll be using in week three. I also wanted to show you again how our construction is looking. Once you've made your week three panels, we'll be ready to join them again. And as a reminder, we're working out in a clockwise direction. All the instructions are in your pattern, including some little diagrams of where we want to make our joins. Each week, we will have one panel that's slightly longer and one that's slightly shorter. So if for any reason you get them mixed up, you join them the long one first and the short one second, they're still gonna fit, they'll still tessellate together. So it's entirely up to you. If you are more of a frogger, then feel free to frog it back and rejoin them in the, the order that sort of mine is joined in. But if you're more of a fudger like me and you just wanna move on and keep the momentum going with the blanket, then please don't worry. Obviously, we've joined ours in this set way as an example, but the panels will still fit together the other way around. So just enjoy it, work through it at your own pace and you know, done is often better than perfect is also one of my mottos. So week three, our lovely tulip rose. I really hope you enjoy doing these. And again, I will pop into the Facebook group this week if you would like to show me your progress pictures or if anybody has any tips they want to share with other people. It's a really nice space to do that too. I will meet you next week where we'll be working through week four together. <laughs>